October 16, 2010, it's Eurobash 2010, organized by the British Eurovision fan club, the OGAE UK. And uh, one of the special guests on this convention is the entry of the 1984 Eurovision Song Contest, Kid Wolf, actually El Elias Bell of Bell and the Devotions. And this is the single, actually, which came out in 1984. And uh, next to Chris, actually, is now the singer, Bell. Elias Kate, hello, nice to meet hi you. There, hi there, JP, hi. Fantastic. Very nice to meet you. 84 took place in, the Euro in, in Luxembourg, actually. Yes, so did, what yeah. are your memories from Luxembourg? Well, I've got many happy memories of Luxembourg. Um, and I've got some very odd memories of Luxembourg that we didn't... Um, we didn't see an awful lot of, um, of the actual city or the country, as it were. Um, but we, um, we had a very good time. We enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. And... Um, and then at the end of the actual experience, we had some strange things happen. At the end of the actual Eurovision, we, um, we had some booze, um, which we were very amazed at. But other than that, we had a fantastic time. Why the booze? What happened? Well, we had the impression that some members of the press didn't like the fact that we did a song which was um, based almost as a tribute to the Tamla Motown sound of Dinah Ross and the Supremes. And um, uh, they actually said it to us. And after the actual show, we were told that the booze came from the press box. Mm. Now, were, were Bell and the Devotions formed especially for the Eurovision Song Contest? No, no. Love Games was the fourth single we had. Mm -hmm. We had the first single was called Where Did Love Go Wrong? And um, we had three singles, and the fourth single was Love Games, which was then entered for the Eurovision Song Contest, for the Song for Europe contest. And, and when it won, um, there you go. And we, ha we were accused of several people on TV, our, our own people, DJs. I remember Simon Bates on the television saying, well, here's another group just made up for Eurovision. And I was sitting there saying, well, we weren't, because this is the fourth single. He's got his facts wrong, you know. But at that time, people were making up groups for Eurovision in England, and so I can't blame people for thinking that was the way. But it wasn't really like that, no. It was a project that we'd started a year before. At Eurovision, do you remember which position your song reached? Seventh. Seventh, the yeah. Love Games. Can you remind the people how it sounded like? Can you sing a bit of it for us, please? You are only playing love games. You are only playing love games. You gave me sugar love and I'm stuck like glue. And all this time you had me hooked on you. You are only playing love games. You are only making love pains. I was just your puppet and you know it's true. You could snap your fingers and I'd run to you. you applause. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic song. We can get the audience in here as well to give a little bit of an applause. Fantastic. And it sounds exactly like on the record. <laughs> Now, uh, after the Eurovision, maybe Chris wants to ask. Well, I was going to say, um, you came seventh in, yeah. in that competition. Did you have any other favourites, actually, in that year? Can you remember um, back to all your the other people in it? Well, I remember very well the actual song that won, but I, I don't remember... Actually, that's not true. I don't remember the actual song. I just remember the three little boys with their blonde hair. <laughs> um, they were very sweet and cute. And um, I also remember... I mean, I didn't really have a favourite, to be honest. But I do remember, right at the end of the contest, when the Diggy Lou boys were um, performing, one of them fell off the back of the stage. <laughs> and that's my most enduring memory of the show. You know, last year, at this, uh, this time, the Luxembourg uh, Eurovision Club, OG Luxembourg, yeah. organized, organized their convention, and we had the, the big pleasure to go to the venue where actually oh, you performed. Really? Because, yeah. yeah, I remember, it was a big sports stadium place, wasn't it? It's um, the Grand Theatre. Right. The Grand, Grand Theatre, that is. That. Right. Sorry, I was mixing up the sports stadium. We played a sports stadium when I did backing vocals in um, Munich. Yeah. That, that's a fantastic link. So what did you do in Munich? Well, I did the backing vocals for Sweet Dreams. Um, our, the entry the year before mine, Sweet Dreams in Munich. Um, I did the backing vocals on that. Mm -hmm. How did you like Munich? Well, we loved Munich. We had a fantastic time. We were looked after very well indeed. And we, um, yeah, the, the German people gave us a lot of hospitality and, and showed us around that part of Bavaria, which uh, I'd never been there, and so it was really lovely, it was, yeah. Now, shall we ask the question if she can sing a little bit of the song, I'm Never Giving Up? Now, that's a really <laughs> tricky one. Um, in fact, the answer, the, the only answer to that is no, and I'm just trying to think, um, no, 
Can you remember the tune? I'm never giving up. I'm... We could say some more and maybe it'll come back to me. I'm never giving up. Not giving up. Oh gosh, it's coming back to me bit by bit, yeah. No, I can't, I, I can't remember it well enough, sorry. <laughs> but that's all right, that's all right. Now, in 83, uh, you went to the Eurovision as a backing vocalist, but you did the yeah. same uh, later on. Yeah, with Samantha Janus in, I believe it was 91. Mm -hmm. Went to Rome with Samantha Janus, and, um, and again, the song was written by, by my old producer songwriters who had worked for so much, Paul Curtis and Graham Sacker. And um, yeah, we had an amazing week in Rome. Rome is my favourite city, probably. Wow. In the whole of Europe, yeah. I was there three weeks ago. I adore the place. <laughs> I just remember when the German commentator was uh, coming to the end credit credits of the, of the the show. He said, "I'm glad it's all over." <laughs> was it really so, so? You say it was very nice, and he said it's, it's been a, in a, been a complete disaster. Um, gosh, that's really strange. We, I think, if I remember rightly, we were at is it Cine City, Cit yeah, um, the film studio place and everything. There were problems, as there always are. I mean, as, as we, we've spoken today earlier on about having live musicians and live orchestras. Yeah, it's true, that does present more problems, more difficulties in, in this kind of um, thing. Um, and yeah, there were, there were some problems here and there, but I, I don't remember anything specific overall. I thought the end product was brilliant and we all had a pretty good week. But I think the Italians... Um, the, the Italians have a small chaos factor. In fact, they definitely do. You know, I love Italians, people, and, and Italy. Mm. Everything Italian I love. Um, and they were actually quite crazy at times in, in a fantastically funny way. They were pretty crazy. And they have a chaos factor, and so possibly, you know, you know the German people like things to run smoothly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the English just mudge it along, you know, make the best <laughs> of it. And the Italians are completely chaotic, so that's probably what it was about. <laughs> at that time in 91, the Bell and the Devotions, did they continue actually no, after Eurovision? Sadly, no. Um, what happened after Eurovision is that we had, um, we had a single out with CBS Records, and CBS were awfully slow to put this single out. And we really felt they'd missed the boat. Uh, it was four months before we were able to persuade them to get the single out. And they'd missed the impetus, they'd missed the, missed the boat. Um, we had nobody at CBS seem to be looking after us. We, were, we thought CBS were an amazing company and therefore we would be, yeah, in with the right people. And unfortunately, it was the opposite. We were the bottom of the pile. Michael Jackson was at the top of the pile at the time. We were the bottom. And um, our producers would go for meetings there, couldn't find anybody to meet with and things like mm. that, and had to really push for the contract to be honoured for another single to come out. And there was no support, nothing. So it fizzled in that respect. But then a German producer approached me, Peter Geisiger from Hanover, and he wanted to carry on. He thought it was fantastic, and he'd written a song which was perfect, very similar type of thing to Love mm. Crimes. And he wanted to carry it on. Um, he could not get permission to use the name, so we called the group Kit and the Devotions. And we, um, Laura, my red-headed singer, Laura, stayed with me for it. Um, Linda went her own way. She wanted to be an actress. So we got another girl in Patrice. And we went to Germany and did several TVs and had a record out there, which was not a smash hit or anything, but it was nice. We were keeping the profile up. In the end, it sort of, you know, fizzled away. <laughs>